I'm constantly trying to create more interest or variation in my beats. And to do that, I've been turning to logic modules more and more to help me create more complex patterns out of the modules and trigger generators that I already have. So what I'd like to do is show you a few simple patches using an OR gate and an AND gate to combine different triggers. Right now I just have grids triggering my kick drum. What an OR gate says, if I get a trigger or gate on my first input, A, or my second input, B, then I'll pass it along to the output. So in this case, if I go ahead and take my trigger from grids and put it into the A input here on the OR, and then take its output and send that along to the trigger input, I get the same result because it only needs one input to pass it along to the output. But now let's say I want to add more beats to this rhythm, something a little bit more interesting, a bit more variation or a bit more weirdness to the pattern than grids produces on its own. I can go ahead and get a second trigger generator, such as say Euclidean circles, and or that, combine that with what grids is doing. So I'm gonna take output one or channel one on Euclidean circles here, put it into input B on my OR gate. And as soon as I start turning up the number of pulses coming out of Euclidean circles, it's gonna say if Euclidean or grids is playing, then we'll play the kick drum. Now if I just have one playing, it's just hitting the downbeat all the time, which is what Grids was doing already. Same thing when I have two beats, but when I go low off kilter and have a Euclidean pattern of three, you see this beat and this beat is doubling up what Grids is doing, but this beat here is new. It's something Grids is not doing, and therefore it's adding or being ordered together to create an additional trigger. And I can have fun with different pattern variations. And the fun thing about Euclidean circles is you can go ahead and offset its beats. I'll go to the magenta, make it 1 16th earlier. Or later. I'll put this back where it was and turn it off for now. So that's an OR pattern and has a very different logic. What it says is I need to have a gate or trigger on my first input A and on my second input B before I will then pass along to the output. So if I take grids, put it into A on my AND gate here, take the output of the AND gate, nothing's happening. That's because we have no gate or trigger on our second input here. We need to add a second trigger. Well, there's a few different ways to do that. For example, you'll notice I have one channel on my Pamela's workout programmed to be on for one measure, then off for another measure. When I add that together with my kick pattern, that's going to say, pass the kick pattern for one measure while it's green, and then don't pass it for the second measure. Let's go ahead and take that output, plug into the second input on my AND gate, and watch these two LEDs. So that gives me a way of introducing pauses into my pattern. It's particularly fun if I want to do more open patterns or more dub style effects. For example, I've already set up a send to go ahead and have an echo on this kick. Having that hold on the pattern gives more room for those echoes to ring out. So that's one example of using an AND gate to create holes in a pattern or open things up. And of course, I can create different patterns out of you. Pamela and the interference patterns, the way it lines up with grids, will determine when the kicks actually get through. However, you can also use it to say, when two events happen, let's make a third event happen. Let's go ahead and patch up that idea. I quite often like to have double kicks. I'll take the kick and the snare patterns out of grids and have it trigger two different kick drums. So here's my normal kick pattern out of grids triggering my SSF. You're familiar with that. I'm going to send a copy of it using a Luigi Doppio cable to input A on my AND gate. Now I'm going to take the snare or second channel out of grids, use a different color cable to keep things straight, 
and have that trigger one of the channels on my disting. Nothing's happening right now, but I'll bring up its fill. And now you hear the alternating double kick pattern. I'll take a copy of that second output, put that into input B on my AND gate. Now that I have an AND gate, it says whenever both of these are hitting at the same time, then it will pass along a trigger to something else. Say I want to trigger an additional sound, like my crucible down here. So let's go ahead and take the output and trigger crucible. Well, right now, the two of them are not hitting at the same time. So there's no occasion where we're going to say A and B are happening together. As soon as I increase the fill density on one of these patterns, we do get some of those overlaps. So you see, whenever you see LEDs on both of these, both kicks being triggered, that's when something's going out of my AND gate here. See a little bit better there. And then when I add some chaos to get some variation in the patterns, I'll get new interactions between the two lines. So that's a few simple examples of how you can use logic with your existing triggers that you have in your system to create more interesting patterns, either by combining them together with an OR gate, or saying only when two different things happen at the same time, allow a trigger to get through to either trigger your main thing to create more openness or sparseness in a pattern, or to trigger a third brand new event.